In this video, you'll learn how to migrate your legacy website to the current Beehive website builder. This video is specifically for Beehive users who have a Beehive account that was created before July 15th, 2025, and have not yet migrated their website to the new website builder experience. To make the migration process as smooth as possible, I'll be covering the best practices, things you need to know, and a little bit on how to use the new website builder. Let's get straight into it. To get started, log into your Beehive account and go over to the website tab. Here, you'll see two different options, Builder and Builder Legacy. If you signed up to your account before July 15th, 2025, and have not yet published a website using the new website builder experience, you'll be able to continue editing your website with Builder Legacy. But if you plan to migrate, simply click on Builder to enter the new experience. Before you do this, however, there are a few things you should know. First of all, you might wanna take note of your website's global colors from the Legacy website builder. This will help you match the design and style of your website when you're migrating to the new experience, if that's what you want. You can find these global colors under the Styles tab in the Legacy Website Builder. Additionally, you might want to take note of the typography or fonts that you're using on your website so that they match in the new experience. It's also important to note that you'll need to recreate any custom pages that you built in the old Legacy experience when you're migrating over. This also includes re-adding these custom pages to your global navigation bar if you did that previously. We'll cover that later in this video. Once you're ready to begin the migration process, go back to the website tab and instead click on Builder this time. From here, you can go through the process of selecting a website template. If you want the website to look similar to the old experience, select the Atlas Collective template. This template is actually based off the old website builder. Once you've chosen a template, hit Next. Now on the color palette step, you can now choose the colors of your website. Here you can choose the same global colors from the legacy experience if you want and paste in the hex codes here. Depending on what template you selected, there will also be recommended color palettes. Once you're done this step, hit next. Now on the typography step, you can choose your default fonts for headings, paragraph text, and button text. Once again, if you want, you can use the same fonts that you used in the legacy experience here. Once you're done, click next. Now, finally, the last step is to choose which website pages you want to add to your website. By default, all will be selected, but you can unselect them if you'd like. You also have the option to add or remove pages later if you change your mind. Hit next once you're done. Now, as the last step, you can choose to show placeholder data or real data on your website. Choosing the Your Post option will pull your existing posts into the site so you can style your actual content. On the other hand, if you don't have many posts yet and just want to see how your website would look like with fake data, you can choose placeholder posts. If you plan on publishing your website directly after the setup, we would recommend you select your posts here. Once you're done, click start building. And just a note, nothing will actually go live until you explicitly click the publish button in the new website builder. Until you hit publish, everything will be in a draft state and your old website from the old legacy experience will be live. After you finish the onboarding steps, you'll now see the website builder editor. On the left-hand side, you'll see a ton of default pages. In the legacy website builder, you only have the option to configure home, subscribe, and upgrade pages. With the new website builder experience, you can also customize several other ones. Additionally, you may notice that there are dynamic pages. Unlike the legacy website builder, in this experience, you can edit how all your surveys, author pages, tag pages, and web posts look like. When you're editing the design and layout of a dynamic page, you're actually editing the design and layout of all those types of pages. For example, if you make changes to your dynamic surveys page, like changing the background color, all of your surveys will be styled like this. Or if you go to edit your dynamic post page, all of your web posts will be edited. What you see in the editor will be placeholder data, and you can preview how a specific page will look like by clicking on the preview icon in the toolbar at the bottom of the editor. Now, right under dynamic pages, you'll see custom pages. As I mentioned before, to fully migrate your website over to the new experience, you'll need to migrate over any custom pages that you previously created. In the Legacy Builder, if you click on the dropdown at the top of the editor and select Custom Pages, you'll see any custom pages that you previously created. If you click on the three dots next to a page and click on Edit, you'll be able to see the content of the page. All you need to do is simply copy over the content into the new experience. Now to create a custom page in the new experience, go to the bottom left of the editor, click on New Page under Custom Pages, 
and click on start from scratch. Now you wanna set the page title and URL. You can also just copy this over from the legacy experience. Once you're done, click on create page. Now that you've created the page, you can now copy over the content from your old custom page. One very important thing that you should consider is that all custom page URLs in the old website builder have a forward slash P forward slash after the website domain, or in other words, have a path called P. If you want your custom pages to have the exact same URL as the old legacy experience, you'll need to complete an additional step. To make sure the custom page URLs work like before and have the same starting path, you need to create another custom page. When you're creating this page, simply make the URL of this page the letter P. Once you've created this page, you can now click the three dots next to it and click disable. This will ensure the page is not accessible. Now, all you have to do is drag any custom pages that you created onto this new page and the URL of the pages will now change. At the top of the editor, you'll be able to see the URL of the page you're editing. All the pages that are grouped under the page with the forward slash P path will now inherit that forward slash P URL as well. Alternatively, you can click on the settings icon, go to all settings and redirects, and essentially build a redirect that will send all the traffic from the old custom page URL to your new one. To do this, click on build redirect and in old path, type in forward slash P forward slash star symbol and in new path type in forward slash dollar symbol and the number one. Now when you go to publish your website all the custom page URLs will work like before without any issues. Once you're done migrating over your custom pages you can now add them to your global navbar and footer. To edit your navbar or footer simply click on any page you have them enabled and click edit navbar or edit footer. Alternatively, you can double click the navbar or footer to open them up in a new editor. Now, once you're in this new editor, you can now simply add the custom pages or any external links and pages you'd like to link out to. Now, if you previously added featured posts in the legacy website builder, you can do something similar in the new experience. In the new experience, when you're editing or inserting a post component, you'll be able to select the post type. To essentially feature or choose specific posts to highlight, choose the free selection post type from the drop-down menu. From here, you can manually select which post you want to feature. Just make sure to hit save when you're done. Now, lastly, if you previously configured any website settings, you'll be able to do the same in the new experience. Simply click on the settings icon on the left-hand side and click on all settings. Here, you'll be able to configure the same settings you previously could and more. For example, if you previously set up a signup flow, you can still do this by clicking on signup flows under features. The only difference now is that you can actually create more than one signup flow and link them to specific signup forms. For example, if you click on any subscribe form on any page, on the right hand side, you'll see an option to select a signup flow. By default, the default signup flow will be selected, but if you've created additional signup flows, you can choose them from here. Once you're done making these changes, you can go ahead and redesign the website however you like. When everything looks good, click on the publish dropdown in the top right corner of the website builder. Now select all pages and click publish to live site to make the switch from the legacy website builder to the new one. If you want to preview your changes first without publishing, simply click on preview draft site. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you might like the other website builder tutorials on our YouTube channel.